So early this morning before work, I uploaded a clip from the most recent episode of Real Time with Bill Maher. Bill's guests were Lawrence Wilkerson, a uh, retired colonel, I believe, gun advocate Emily Miller and journalist Josh Barrow. Uh, they were talking about the recent Orlando nightclub massacre and while doing so touched on religion and gun control. So it was a short clip, about five minutes or so, but jam-packed with really loaded and controversial subject matter. For some reason, I got this nagging feeling during the day that since the subject matter was so controversial, maybe I shouldn't have just uploaded the clip. Maybe I should have offered my commentary as well, so people know exactly where I stand on the topics being discussed. So that's what I'm going to do now. Already released a nearly hour-long episode this week, so I'll try to keep this one brief. Fingers crossed, here we go. Okay, Let, let's talk about the other stuff that happened this week, because it's important. And uh, I thought Barack Obama really nailed it when he said if, about eight years ago that Americans cling to their guns and their religion. Guns and religion. Well, right off the bat, I'm sure that one's going to piss some people off. As a left-leaning non-believer atheist, I think there's a lot of truth in that, but I remember when Obama originally made that comment, I kind of vicariously cringed for him because it was such a kind of brazen and undiplomatic thing for a president to say. Or was he a candidate at the time? I forget. Not that I was offended. Quite the contrary. I just knew it wasn't going to go well for him. I would argue that maybe someone needed to say it, but in retrospect, I don't think much good came out of it. It didn't help our ongoing problem with gun violence, and all it seemed to do is divide people. Anyway. Because this tragedy was brought to you by guns and religion. And uh... Now, despite what I just said, I believe that was brilliant. I think Bill's spot on. Simply put, this tragedy was indeed brought to us, as Bill put it by guns and religion, and also possibly by some lax law enforcement policies concerning people on or who have been on the terror watch list having access to guns. After all, this guy had been investigated numerous times, but I think someone's going to bring up the terror watch list a bit later. Uh, <laughs> and, and anytime somebody shoots up a gay nightclub, the question is, is not, was religion involved? It's what religion was involved. What? And, Are you kidding me? And unfortunately, There's only one religion that is bombing and terrorizing people. I was just about to say that. Okay. There is. A, I what? was just about to, yes, exactly. Okay. There, I'm sorry, folks. That's the truth, too. I agree. We have to be real on both counts. Yes, the God hates fags people show up with placards and posters, and they're despicable, but they don't show up with guns and bombs. That's just the world as it is today. True that. No need to elaborate. Bill summed it up very nicely. The answer is not to ban Muslims, however. The answer is to ask more of Muslims. I thought that was a really interesting point Bill made when he says we need to ask more of Muslims. He doesn't really elaborate on what he means, but I took it to mean that we shouldn't take this paternalistic, patronizing, kid-glove approach to Muslims that we see many on the far left like Steve Shives and the so-called regressives doing. Oh, we can't criticize Islam. Christianity, okay, but not Islam. We mustn't say anything to offend Muslims. They're very delicate, don't you know, and they might go off like a bomb. Uh, I'm kidding a bit, but I think there's some truth in it. I think it, it's not just political correctness that causes people on the left, even many atheists, sadly, to give Islam a pass. But I think in some cases, maybe not even on a fully conscious level, it's fear, too. You can publicly insult Christians till the cows come home and feel relatively safe. But Islam, that might be a different story. Think about Theo Van Gogh, uh, Charlie Hebdo, etc., etc. But if people really want equality for Muslim people, want them to be treated like everyone else, then treat them like adults. Don't coddle them like children. Let them know that we do expect more. We expect them to have the same thick skin and restraint when it comes to criticism of their beliefs as the rest of us. Religions are man-made and they should be open to criticism. 
You want to be a part of the civilized modern world. Try to let it sink in that just because you believe something doesn't mean the rest of us have to as well. And I think Bill mentioned that the answer isn't to ban Muslims. I'll spare you my take on immigration. I've gone over that ground numerous times recently. Uh, suffice to say, I don't believe in a total ban or shutting one's doors completely, but I do believe in in enacting sensible immigration policies and or reforms. I don't think it's smart to follow the example of countries like Germany. Uh, Germany in 2015 alone, I believe, took in over a million immigrants. I'm the descendant of immigrants, Irish and Italian, so I try to be somewhat empathetic and try not to be too hard-hearted. But I think uh, countries should only take in as many immigrants at a time as it can successfully assimilate or absorb. Did I say I wasn't going to give you my take on immigration? Anyway. I think. And the answer is incontrovertibly, in my mind, that we need some kind of control on the weapons in this country. Okay. Yes. Uh-oh, gun control. We do not... You do not. I, I, I own 14 weapons. I own none. I will suplex you if you attack me. I've owned weapons since I was 12 years old. I've <laughs> hunted since I was 12 years old with my father, my brothers. We do not need large capacity magazine, semi-automatic weapons in the hands of anybody in this country other than possibly law enforcement. I gave my opinion on semi-automatic weapons, as wishy-washy as it was, and extended clips in, in the last episode I just published, entitled Thoughts on Orlando, Objective Morality, and Guns. So I'll try to spare you it here. But basically the gist was that if, and I mean if, by banning or limiting the size of extended clips or magazines or whatever, you could really slow down a mass shooter and give people more of an opportunity to tackle or subdue the person while he's trying to reload, then I think that would be a good thing. Why do you where, need 12? Where's my old friend Larry? Why do I need that many? Yeah. I've accumulated them. Oh, I see. <laughs> Larry. My father died and left me some. I my see. brother died and left sure, me Christmas. some. Sure, Christmas. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I don't go sell them to just anybody. Good oh, I'll you. buy some. Uh, yes. I'll buy them off I you. wouldn't sell them to you. Because my friend... Damn, that was cold, Larry. <laughs> I'll buy my own. I, I don't know what Larry's talking about. He's totally wrong. First of all, high-capacity magazine... John, completely... John McCain made an uh, egregious statement. John McCain... He withdrew it, but he made an egregious statement that said that Barack Obama was responsible for Orlando. I wasn't aware that McCain made that statement. Strange. Yes. If anybody is directly responsible well, for Orlando, it's the Republican Party for stymieing all manner of gun control. Okay, then, Larry. Gun control. Larry. But, but, but you're not for, for repealing the, the Second Amendment. So there still would be 300 million guns in America. I wouldn't repeal the Second Amendment. As Libby as I can be, I'm not for repealing the Second Amendment either. Lieutenant General Jerry Bricken right. said that Christ brought the Second Amendment to us, so, you know, I wouldn't have pulled... Uh... Oh, man, I almost forgot about Boykin. That guy's a trip. He thinks Christ is gonna come back with an AK-47, or something to that effect. I've covered him a couple of times in the past. Repeal the Second I, Amendment. First of all, there that. is no... I, I wrote a book about this. There is, and there is no gun control law that has ever been proven to reduce gun crime. <laughs> Australia did a confiscation program. There is no gun control law that, in the United States of America but, that has ever... I'm not familiar with the stats, so I'll do the responsible thing and keep my mouth shut. Well, the real responsible thing would be to go do some fact-checking. But hey. Reduce gun crime and actually well, in Australia, the okay. violent crime... But, but, only, but can, we get, can we get real here, world. first of all? Uh, if he didn't use the AR-15, there's plenty of other guns in America. There's Maybe no they would not have been as effective. But we are not going to have the cops go around and confiscate 300 million guns any more than we're going to deport 11 million illegals. This is like saying, all I right, want more right, Great right. Lakes. Yeah, I think America lives in a total fantasy but land. You, but, but you also, have Mary... to do something. You have to do something, for example, like saying the people on the no-fly list can't buy weapons. Absolutely. Well, no. So it was Wilkerson who brought up the no-fly list. 
And it is funny, right-wing politicians are always going on about terrorism, uh, rightly so in some cases, but they're weak when it comes to trying to keep guns out of the hands of people who are suspected of terror-related activities. Rather odd. But I think it simply boils down to the fact that they're probably hesitant to try to establish any new laws or policies that might interfere with the Second Amendment for fear it might come back and bite them in the ass, even if it could mean keeping weapons out of the hands of a suspected terrorist. We already make people register firearms or get a license. We keep felons from owning guns. Why not suspected terrorists? I know the counter argument will probably be that the key word is quote unquote suspected and people shouldn't be denied their right to bear arms unless convicted. But hey, I'm in favor of keeping guns from people who are or have been under investigation for terrorism. What can I say? If you disagree, that's cool. Hopefully we can still be friends. You know, you have to have something. All right, we, this has been... Or, and, and I'm also for getting rid of the AR-15s because it's a, such a guys, microcosm of what's wrong uh, with the this AR country. No one will ever give an inch. You have so many thousands of guns available. Do you have to have every one? Okay, so we I've thought of that too, but I'm sure it has to do with a slippery slope argument. Ban one kind of gun, next you'll ban them all or something like that. You guys, who is to blame then for the Boston bombing? The Sarnayevs. No, but what? There's no guns used. So if, if oh, guns are the cause the, of the terror... So because I if, kill you with a knife instead of a gun and someone else kills someone with a gun, gun you guns make, aren't... It's more difficult you, for people to kill people, and so fewer people will be killed. You just, Actually, if the Tsarnaev brothers had AR-15s, they probably would have tallied up a much higher death toll. I think they killed four when you include the killing of the MIT officer. I think what made the Boston bombing attack seem so grisly was the use of the pressure cooker bombs placed on the ground, which ripped through limbs and injured about 264 people. Uh, guns do make it easier to kill people. As someone who does carpentry, I often compare to some tools I use. I can use an old-fashioned handsaw to cut through a 2x4, and it might take me a while, but I can cut through the same piece of wood in a matter of seconds with a circular saw. Or I could hammer two pieces of wood together using a traditional hammer, and each nail will take me a few whacks. But give me a nail gun and I can do the same work in seconds. Yeah, when people don't have guns, they can use other things like knives, as seems to be the custom of China's homicidal madmen. But something like an AR-15 will make it a hell of a lot easier and most likely greatly up the kill count. There are some exceptions to play devil's advocate. There have, of course, been incidents of terror like... Oklahoma City and 9-11 where explosives as opposed to firearms were used to achieve massive casualties. Oklahoma City around 168 and 9-11 of course roughly 3,000. So for terrorists or your not so friendly neighborhood psychopath couldn't get their hands on a gun, could they instead wreak even greater havoc by resorting to things like explosives? To be honest, sure, why not? Uh, I just gave a couple of examples. But I'm sure shooting people like fish in a barrel with an AR-15 requires a lot less planning. You all just said that guns are the reason that the terrorists are killing us. Nobody, they, nobody said no, guns were the that. reason. We were saying that guns no. are a part of the problem. I, and, okay. well, I'm part just of saying the problem is just, admit there were, just admit they're a vice, like drugs or alcohol or anything else, and that you don't care that some people are going to get killed. Like drugs. If you say to me some people are going to get hurt and killed by drugs, I would say that's too bad, but I still want them. That's another really interesting point by Bill. I've never thought about it that way before. In a sense, I think it's a valid comparison. It's as if people want what they want and to hell with the societal costs. I'm probably that way with alcohol. I know I drink a lot on the show, but I swear I'm not an alcoholic. At least I don't think so. I only drink on the weekends, but I gotta be honest, I love it. And the knowledge that people die in drunk driving accidents or are abused by alcoholic spouses, as empathetic as I am, it isn't enough for me to screw the cap back on and say, hey, we should ban this stuff. Just admit it. But, but... Just don't make it a virtue. It's not a virtue. The whole point of gun ownership and the Second Amendment is so that we, me, I'm a gun owner, you're like you, I think you are? Yes. 
because we want to defend ourselves. That's the purpose of the Second Amendment. It's not that we can go out and kill people. Nobody wants By to kill way, people. By the way, let me clear something up here. Okay. I don't own guns to defend myself. Why do you own them? I own guns to hunt with. So what happens if someone comes in your home? You're just going to go, go? I don't own the guns in case someone comes in my home so that I can shoot them. Okay, because but that is the purpose of Because I don't expect someone second. to come in my home because I have law enforcement and other people around me Do you know what the response time is for law happening. enforcement? The response time is 10 minutes. But the response, yes. the average response time for law enforcement is 10 minutes. So in those 10 minutes, when that person is in your home, you're telling them you're not going to touch your guns. I'm 71 years old. I've lived in this country for 71 years, <laughs> except for the years I was deployed fighting for this country when I did need my guns, and no one's ever entered my house and tried to kill me. Okay, I'm actually going to kind of side with the gun advocate a bit here, and I was wondering if because I end the clip on that note, if people took it to mean that I agreed with Lawrence Wilkerson. I just ended it there because that seemed to be the end of that bit of conversation. But I think she makes a valid point with the response time argument. And also just because Lawrence Wilkerson has been lucky enough to never have had his home broken into, or at least broken into by a violent criminal, doesn't mean everyone else will be as fortunate. The argument could go on and on regarding the danger of having a firearm in the house, etc. But I do get why some might want a firearm for protection. But I'm going to end it there. Uh, YouTube people, leave your thoughts in the comments section below. My faithful audio-only listeners, thank you as always. All right, peace out.